One thing I want to get on the record. Got to start off by getting something on the record. And it's a Dominic Mysterio thing. Because every time I talk about Dominic Mysterio, the TikTok blows up and I see all these people make these videos and, and I, I get this topic kind of up and trending again. And, and I see people who make videos that maybe don't think I see them, but I see the videos where they say things like, oh, so-and-so, or, or the, the, they allude to the fact that like, I, for some reason, have a problem with Dominic Mysterio. I don't have a problem with Dominic Mysterio. I just think that from my point of view, he's not getting better. He hasn't done anything interesting as a face or as a heel. And, and we, at this point in time, <clears throat> there's, there's no reason to give him flowers. And, and, and what I do need is for everybody to stop overreacting to this past week where, where he went on and he cut a promo and he did the whole, I am this generation's Eddie Guerrero or that Eddie Guerrero was his generation's Dominic Mysterio. I, I saw a lot of people overreact to that line and go, look, that's it. He's got it. He understands. You guys have to understand. Like, we, we can't pretend to be stupid here. That line was fed to him. Yeah. Someone told him, pre-going out to cut a promo, this line will get a reaction. And that's why I say that his heat is, is it's not self-generated heat. It is situational heat. And, and I know people go, well, that's okay. That's part of wrestling. It is okay. But you have to be a, a part of what's going. He's literally just a pawn. He's a prop inside of this situation that's happening and it just so happens that he has a lineage that goes back to eddie guerrero that's what that's what his position here is and someone told him be it triple h be it whoever's back there helping with the promo someone told him if you go out and say this the crowd will pop and the fans will pop and people will people will get up in arms so i'm not look i'm not giving dominic mysterio any credit for that that line. What was the line efficient? Sure, the line was great. I've been calling for the last what three months that Dominic Mysterio just take on the Eddie Guerrero personality. I think at this point, Dominic Mysterio should come out on Monday Night Raw next week and just change his name to Dominic Guerrero. Oh shit. No, I mean it, from a character point of view, I think it works the best. If he just comes out and says I am no longer a Mysterio. I am a Guerrero. I am Dominic Guerrero and it's just a character change and it begins to at least form some semblance of his own version of this character cuz right now it's still just him being carried by a bunch of other people and and him being fed lines that work. And that leads me into topic number 1. <clears throat> topic number one this week is I think I spend way too much time fixated on my lack of interest in Dominic Mysterio. And even I'm developing a lack of interest in Damian Priest because I don't know that he's that much more interesting than Dominic Mysterio at this point. As far as the judgment day goes, I don't remember the last time that Damian Priest was in a meaningful match. Uh, besides what he was in a match with edge, maybe four or five weeks ago. Other yeah. than that, he's become a mouthpiece. I can't really tell at this point if Judgment Day is a supernatural group or are they a biker gang? Because they're now wearing bandanas and leather and <laughs> going out and partying after Monday Night Raws apparently is what's happening. So I don't like I don't know if my lack of interest in Dominic Mysterio and even Damian Priest, but I do tend, I think, to sometimes forget or maybe even miss how impressive and important. Rhea Ripley has become to the future of WWE. She, when, when I think about, like, when I look back, or, or when we go into the future, I think, and when we look back at this moment in time, because that's what we do, right? We're going to, a year from now, we'll go back and look at how successful was the Judgment Day. And when we look back, I think there's a few things that we'll remember more than others. I don't think we'll remember how bad Dominic Mysterio is because I, I almost think it's irrelevant. I don't think we'll remember what impact Judgment Day had on Damian Priest. I think one year from now, Finn Balor will have created his own success. But I do think that one thing we can take away from this moment in time with the Judgment Day is the arrival and transcendence of this version of Rhea Ripley. I really feel like this version of Rhea Ripley has kind of it's it's even it's kind of snuck up on me. I think that for the judgment day 
they, they've kind of served their purpose now. They've elevated at least one of the members of the group to a level that I think is justified for a group being together that long. I think time will tell if Finn Balor ends up benefiting from, from long-term exposure with the Judgment Day. I think time will tell if Damian Priest ever ends up actually doing anything as part of the Judgment Day. And time will tell if Dominic Mysterio comes out of the group in a, in a better position than he entered the group, right? I think that's those are all fair things to say. But we can sit here and debate the Dominic Mysterio shit every week. There's every week there's something to talk about and, and it's gonna get recognition and get attention. But I think for this week I'd like to focus on on Rhea Ripley and, and, and how she's doing a phenomenal job. And I don't think she's been this over with a WWE crowd since maybe NXT. Let's not forget we're not that far removed from the Monday Night Raws, where she was being beat by Liv Morgan week in and week out. I agree. So, so like, this is a far jump from that situation, or where she was being forced to tag team with Nikki A.S.H., and she was being forced to hold back when she got into these matches with these women who she clearly is better than. Mm-hmm. And I've seen reports, and I've seen the rumors, and I've talked about it on this show, uh, that the two women's matches for WrestleMania are set in stone. They're set in place. We know what the Raw Women's Championship is going to be. Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair. That's what we're being told. And the SmackDown Women's Championship is Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey. And and nothing to negative to say about either one of those matches. They'll probably be hellacious matches. Great matches. But it leaves leaves me a little bit confused on then what is the path ahead for Rhea Ripley. Because if I'm just being completely honest, and we're talking about the most... Interesting female in professional wrestling right now, possibly the most over female in wrestling right now. I think it's Rhea Ripley. I don't think it's Bianca Belair. I don't think it's Bailey. Yeah. I think that Rhea, just because she's wrestling with men right now and, and involved in stories that are men, she gets left out of the conversation. I don't think it's Jade Cargill. I think the most interesting person that is female in professional wrestling right now is Rhea Ripley. And it feels like to me that it would be a crime at this point for Rhea Ripley not to be featured in one of the two major championship matches at WrestleMania. I think it's a huge missed opportunity, to say the least, to to not feature your young and upcoming talent who is the most interesting woman in professional wrestling right now. I mean... I mean, I agree 100%. So the other thing I I thought about, right, is that you mentioned that she's fighting with the men right now. Mm -hmm. How many women in wrestling have crossed over to that sort of thing? I know China, China? you told told me, right? Yeah, that's the only one that I have ever witnessed do it on a level that actually made, uh, Beth Phoenix did it a little bit, but not not on the same level as China. But like Rhea Ripley, it's believable. I have no problem with it. I'm not- through a man. Yeah, like, and it's not like, it's not cringy in like the, the sense that sometimes- when things it happen, you go like masculine uh, and like overly like I'm trying to be one of the guys. She's just saying, no, I'm a fucking strong ass woman. And she just kind of comes off me. as a badass. Yeah. You're, you're exactly right. I've actually really fallen in love with her character <clears throat> um, in this aspect, because I agree with you. I got tired of her getting beaten. I was like, this is so dumb that I don't know at what point they decided to put her in this role, but I think it's amazing. I agree. And I don't know if they stumbled onto this. I don't know if this happened by luck or if this was always the plan, but I think Rhea Ripley is the one coming out of judgment day with the most momentum and, and stands the most to gain. I also think though, if we're looking at the future, we're looking at WrestleMania and we're talking about the triple H era and we're talking about building new beginnings and things like that. I, I'm not all about this idea that we just take the two top matches from last year and we just switch, we just shake up the components and we go, oh, it was Becky, Bianca, Charlotte, Ronda. Let's just take all those people and mix them up. Now let's get, let's get some different people in here. I'm in agreement with you. Let, let's let's change it up because I still believe, I honestly believe, I know I've seen people who say that Charlotte and Bianca would be this huge match. I, I don't necessarily see it. They've, They've been in a ring before together, and I don't know that the chemistry is just unbelievable. Yeah. But I do think that Bianca Belair versus Rhea Ripley in a WrestleMania title match. Yeah, because they're both two strong women. If built up correctly, the amount of strength and the amount of athleticism that would be in that match, if you gave it the proper build and you let Rhea Ripley 
do through the judgment day. And we were going to get this. If you don't, I mean, if you recall, the minute Bianca won the title, we got teased that the judgment day was coming for Bianca Belair. Yes. And then it, we found out that Rhea Ripley had some health problems. And so we had to curve that. <clears throat> I, I do think, though, right now, just stop talking about the future. We'll talk about the present. I think it's time to get Rhea Ripley involved in something meaningful. She can't just be a side act for the Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. It's time that, that she takes kind of a front seat role here. And she's obviously been cleared to wrestle because she went over to NXT and got her feet wet, got to wrestle. So at Crown Jewel, 100%, I think it's she's got to be involved in a wrestling capacity in the Judgment Day versus OC. Now, question becomes... Who do you place in the OC that has the credibility to get into the ring with Rhea Ripley at this point? Yeah. I've heard names thrown around. Nikki Cross. It looks like she's got other things going on now. I, I've seen Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix is a super credible opponent, mm -hmm. but I don't know how she fits in if Edge isn't involved in the match, right? Yeah. To me, there is only one person you can bring back at this point that makes sense Who? to join the OC, and that's Charlotte. Oh. Charlotte's due for a comeback, right? True. She has a history with AJ Styles. She was AJ Styles' mix match uh, teammate on that Facebook challenge show, whatever they had. Do you remember the mix match challenge? Yes. Where they we didn't watch it, up? but I remember of it, like hearing about it. <clears throat> yeah. So she was. So there's history there. She could come back. She's a big enough name. She could get kind of get back into rhythm. It puts her on Monday Night Raw, which is where I think they want Charlotte Flair right now. Because if they're going to start something with Bianca Belair and Charlotte, she's yeah. got to be on Monday Night Raw. I think that you're going to see Charlotte come back to Monday Night Raw and you're going to see Becky Lynch return back to SmackDown. Yeah. That's how you're going to get those feuds started. So I think to me that, that the only thing I see that, that works is for Charlotte to come back at Crown Jewel, do it as some kind of big surprise, right? A big surprise entrance. Who's who's going to join? And then you hear that da 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 and, and it's Charlotte. And I think it makes sense and it's... It works. It just works, right? That would be pretty fucking awesome. Um, but even speaking of Charlotte and Rhea Ripley uh, in, in the ring, I wouldn't be against a triple threat match at, at WrestleMania that featured Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, and Charlotte Flair. I think triple match, uh, triple threat matches add a little bit of intrigue and interest, and in, in especially when you have three competitors like that who are all worthy of being in that moment, I think I have no problem with that. Even more, though, than that... I think a fun match, and we'll probably see this in the future at some point, though, is Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, and Raquel Rodriguez. Ooh. Because that is a new level and standard yeah. for the women's division. These these uh, tall, athletic. Strong. Strong, but not clunky. They're not clunky. I agree. They're, they're athletic. They're graceful. Raquel Rodriguez, extreme, I, I've been extremely impressed with Raquel Rodriguez. You know, I've always been a big Bianca Belair fan. Mm -hmm. And this upcoming of Rhea they're Ripley here. They're built differently than just your, like, uh, <clears throat> quintessential skinny little model type girl. To me, they're the hybrids. They're, they're hybrids because mm -hmm. WWE went through this point in time where they wanted people who could only wrestle. Then they went through a time where they wanted only the models. Yeah. Now you have these hybrid women mm -hmm. who are who are everything. They they don't they have every everything you want for a professional wrestler. It's wrapped up in a package and they're they're interesting and fun to watch. Yeah.